The race to 5G is on, and the U.S. has some ground to make up for if it wants to catch up and pass the global leader in that tech, China. With us now to discuss from Washington, D.C., is FCC Commissioner Brendan Carr. Welcome. So as it stands now with China, uh, how is the U.S. positioned in the 5G race? We're actually in really good shape right now with respect to China. About two years ago, we had some hurdles in the U.S. to overcome to catch up. And we're now closing the gap. I was just in Barcelona uh, earlier this week at the world's largest wireless conference. And a lot of regulators are talking about how the U.S. Uh, is now in the pole position with 5G, although we have work to do to maintain that lead over China. Um, Commissioner, you know, we hear a lot from the corporate side of the equation that everyone's really excited about 5G, right? Our parent company, Verizon, uh, that's all they ever really want to talk about. But from a regulatory standpoint, where do you see um, 5G technology in terms of it becoming something that consumers might be interacting with um, on a daily basis? I'm really excited about what 5G is going to be for consumers. To start with, obviously, it's going to be much faster smartphones, up to 20 times faster than now. In a lot of ways, that's actually the least exciting part of 5G. The second piece that I think about it from is more choices for high-speed home internet service. Right now, a lot of consumers feel like they have one or no choices for competitive home broadband. And what 5G is going to do is give them fiber-like speeds, wireline-like speeds delivered wirelessly. So you're going to see more options, more choice in the broadband market. So that's exciting. The third piece of it is really a new wave of innovation, whether it's connected cars, the Internet of Things, virtual reality. We have to upgrade the network to 5G to enable all those innovations for consumers to use. Commissioner, uh, just given the uh, investments that the likes of Verizon, AT&T, and even uh, Sprint are making in 5G, aren't consumers going to have to bear those costs? Aren't we looking at just higher phone bills and broadband bills? Yeah, there's a couple interesting things with this shift to 5G. One is price per megabyte uh, continues to drop for consumers. And second of all, one of the things that 5G does is it opens up new revenue opportunities uh, for companies. So it will not be uh, pulling solely from consumers. For instance, Internet of Things, industrial applications. Uh, there's a lot of interesting manufacturing developments that are going to be enabled from 5G. So the price per megabyte is going down for consumers. And we're also looking at 5G being opened up uh, to broader business side revenue opportunities. I think the issue is like while the price might be coming down, we all have to use so much more when you think about how many connected devices we have and what's actually being predicted for the future. What is the impact, do you think, of 5G on the economy and on GDP? I think it's been estimated that 4G spurred about $950 billion in the whole app economy. What can we be expecting in the business world from 5G? Yeah, when I think looking back at the transition from 3G to 4G is a great example. It unleashed, you know, billions of dollars in uh, economic upside for the U.S. And we're looking to see that again uh, with 5G. It's going to be a $275 billion investment just in terms of building these networks. Uh, and those are good paying, solidly uh, middle class jobs in terms of putting in the new antennas, putting in the new fiber. Uh, and then to your broader point, the economic opportunity for U.S.-based companies when we get this deployed. So I think it's a great story for the U.S. economy over the next decade. And I just want to ask you about Huawei. I mean, the Trump administration has really been um, at a, a war of words uh, of sorts with uh, China's Huawei, even reportedly pushing our allies to stop using its equipment. Uh, how does this all shake out with Huawei, do you think? I mean, can the U.S. win the 5G race not using any Huawei technology? Well, there's still a lot of uh, choice in terms of the equipment that goes into networks. Right now at the FCC, we have an open proceeding where we're looking at a lot of these security issues in terms of the devices that are going into the network. We're meeting uh, with the intelligence community. We're taking public comment. And we haven't reached a final decision yet uh, on the nature and scope of the security threat that we're looking at at the FCC. And then if so, what action should we take? But even more broader than that, I think there's a question of values that's at stake here. With the 5G network, it's no longer just about voice communications and checking emails. As we talked about, it's connecting the Internet of Things, connected cars, uh, really sensitive data. So you have to ask yourself, with the equipment that goes into that, do you want the companies behind that, ones that share 
some common values that we do in the U.S. For instance, First Amendment values, uh, respect mm -hmm. for intellectual property. I think all of that's part of the equation when you think about the network that we want to build this 5G economy on. Uh, and Commissioner, just quickly before we let you go, uh, the president made some waves a couple weeks ago when he tweeted about wanting 6G technology. I would just ask, have you discussed this with the president since then? Uh, I've not. So right now, you know, we're very focused on getting the regulations right to help roll out 5G. And those regulatory efforts we're doing are paying off. Right now, the U.S. has the largest commercial deployment of 5G, 14 cities last year. Uh, and the plans are to more to double that this year. But we're open to all sorts of new technologies coming online, whether it's new low Earth orbit satellites, fixed wireless, upgrade to the wireline network. So we're trying to get the regulations right and let the innovators put the technology out over it. FCC Commissioner Brendan Carr, thanks so much for joining us from D.C.